This video will review how to schedule a web conference using Microsoft Teams. There are two options for scheduling a Teams web conference. The first one is to do it via Microsoft Outlook. Um, the pros for this is you might already be familiar with the tools of Microsoft Outlook and using the calendar feature. Um, it also works well if you're inviting just a few people, maybe one or two people, or if you have a listserv that you're inviting, so maybe the entire faculty list using the listserv. The other option is to create the web conference via Teams on the desktop, so actually going into the Teams platform and creating the web conference schedule. Now this works better if you perhaps are already creating a team for a specific group of people to meet, but you also plan on them sharing files and using the chat features and doing more than just meeting with the team. The, either if you choose Microsoft Outlook or if you use uh, create the session using Teams on the desktop, you're going to have the exact same results of having a scheduled web conference to join. In this case, let's pretend that we're very familiar with the Outlook calendar and would like to make a Teams meeting from there. So we'll open up Outlook and go to our calendar area and then up here at the top we'll see New Teams Meeting. So we'll choose that and then you'll see that this information will populate at the bottom that will be sent to the people joining your team. So from here you can type in the people that will be joining your team um, or your meeting. So it might be the entire faculty list if you're having a training for everybody. Um, it might be individual people. You would then want to fill out the subject area, so sample meeting, training about X, Y, and Z, whatever it's going to be about, and then you'll have your start and end time. Now, if you want to make sure that the people that you are joining are going to be able to actually um, come to the event, they don't have something else planned, you can use the scheduling assistant here. Now, this works if the people you are inviting have their calendar, uh, have the events added on their calendar. So we see that Jared is currently free during this time. I could add in someone else. And in that case, I see that she's not free during this time, so I might want to make an adjustment as to when I'm going to have my meeting. Another quick tip is if you don't want to get those constant replies of people having it accepted or not accepted or put it tentatively on their calendar, you can choose the response options and uncheck request responses and that way it's not going to notify you every time someone accepts it or not. And if this is to be a reoccurring meeting, you can also add it as a reoccurrence um, and have it, you know, if it's going to be the same time, it may be every Tuesday from after three occurrences. So we're going to meet for three weeks um, weekly at this exact same day and time. And so that'll make it a little bit easier in terms of having to constantly make new meetings. Another setting that might help you is up here beside the join the teams meeting is under settings you can choose some meeting options. And this will help define how that meeting is going to work. So one area is the lobby. So when you are in Microsoft Teams, um, there is a lobby area when you first enter in. And it requires someone that is already in the meeting to accept you into the Teams meeting. And that's really a safeguard so that just if a random person somehow gets access to your meeting, they don't randomly get into your meeting. Um, there's a safeguard there. They'll be held in the lobby till someone accepts them. So when somebody you know goes to accept them, they'll read their name and say, oh yeah, they're supposed to be in the meeting or oh no, I have no idea who this is, I'm not going to accept them in. So there is a safeguard there. Um, but you can choose if you want to be able to bypass the lobby. So you can choose if you want everyone to bypass the lobby to basically there isn't a lobby. Um, or you can have it to where people in my organization can bypass the lobby or only me, which would mean everybody has to come in um, via the lobby. So you can choose that. It's really up to you to determine how secure you want it to be. Now keep in mind that no one can come in. If you choose the lobby, no one can come in unless somebody who's already in the session brings them in from the lobby. You can choose those that are calling via phone to bypass the lobby, which is probably a good idea. Um, you can choose to when people announce when they leave or join, which it's up to you to decide on that one. I think it's a little bit of a distraction, so I won't choose that. Um, you can also choose who can present. 
if this is going to be a meeting where you're collaborating and maybe you're wanting to each of you to share your different screens then maybe you want everyone um, or everyone in the institution who um, in, in your organization to be able to share the screen if this is going to be something to where you're presenting and others are not and they're mainly just watching you you might want to make it only me so that they can't pr accidentally present their screen um, or if you're doing a presentation with certain people you might have it to where specific people can um, share and present their screen. And then the others are basically givens. Um, allow the mic for attendees, allow them to turn on their microphone, allow them to turn on their camera, and then having the meeting chat enabled, which you probably do want to have for all of those. And so we're going to save that so that those settings are ready to go. And then lastly, we're just going to send this meeting. So now that we've sent it, notice it is on our Outlook calendar. We're able to click on it, open it up, and it is there available to us. Now what happens if, oops, I need to add another person in? No big deal, we'll just come in, use the forwarding, and we will forward either just this one occurrence or the entire series to another person if they need to be joined in on the meeting. There is another way to create Teams meeting, and this especially works if you are going to be working long term with a group of people um, that you don't want to have to constantly make um, Outlook invites for. And if you want to be able to share maybe documents, have group chats that are going on in addition to your meetings um, that you're having live. And so in that case is to actually have a team created in your team's account and so you would actually have to ask and put in a help star ticket to have IT create that team for you to begin with um, but one person can be designated as the team owner and they can add other people in so in that case you want to open up your team's interface come over to teams on the far side and then you'll be able to pick a team that you would um, you'll be able to pick your team that has been created for you There's a couple of things you might want to edit about your team before you really get it set up. So if I'll choose beside it, I can choose to edit my team. And then one option here is you can change, of course, the team name if you want it to be something else. And you can also change the privacy. Now by default it's going to be private and so that I am the owner of the team and I can add in members if I want to and only those members can be able to um, see or join the team. I can change it to where it is public to where anyone in the organization can join the team. So that's more of just an open approach. It's really depending on which you would like to do. And then of course you can pick a little icon for your team. Something else you might choose to do is to manage your team. So if you choose this icon and choose manage your team, it'll open up some options for you. This is where you can add in members, which we'll get back to in a second. This is where if people have requested to be a part of your team, you can um, accept them in, as well as you can edit some different settings here. Add a team picture, um, edit the member permissions, where you can see all the different options there. Something else you might do is create a team code so that other people can add in the team code and join your group without it being per se public. So in that case you can do team code, generate the team code, and then you would give this to whomever you would like for, uh, to be able to join your team um, and again they would just come here to when they log into their teams they would do join and create team drop in that team code and then they would be able to join that team and so it's kind of hidden um, but you have the secret passcode to get in So again, under this manage team, as well as here, you can add in members to your team. And this is me as the administrator of my team or the owner of my team adding in other people. All right, so I'll add those in. And now I will have my team in itself. So if I go back here to manage team, and I choose members and guests, I'm able to see those two people have been added as members. 
I do have the option if needed to change one of them to being an owner of the group so like a co-owner in that sense. So now that we have our team set up we can go ahead and create meetings just like we did with the Outlook calendar but we can do it through Teams and again this works best if you are going to be meeting with a group over time, um, a subset of people and maybe you want to do more than just meet, maybe you want to share files and those type things which we will discuss later in another video but I do want to show you how to set up those meetings if you want to do it through a team and so you would log into your Teams area, your, your Microsoft Teams account, you would go to Teams, you would choose your team, and then here at the top you can choose to meet now or schedule a meeting. Meet now is, this is an emergency, I need, I need to meet live with everybody right now. So if I choose meet now, it's going to open up a Teams session and it's going to automatically, uh, my the people in my team will get a notification saying Autumn is starting a meeting right now and then they'll know to join it um, and then that's just like kind of an impromptu type meeting but similar to what we were doing with the Outlook calendar is the scheduling of a meeting and so we'll choose this drop down we'll choose to schedule a meeting and then we'll fill out this information which looks very similar to what we were doing a minute ago on the Outlook calendar so here you would fill out the form very similar to what you did in the Outlook calendar the name um, the meeting date and time, um, if it's going to repeat or not, and then any note that you would like to include. Now since this is in the um, actual team area, the people that are on the team will automatically be invited to it. Um, so you can add in other required attendees if you want to. And then again you can use that scheduling assistant that we used earlier. If you're adding in other people you'll be able to see the scheduling assistant here. But other than that, you would just send it. And notice now, this shows up on my D2L training group under the general area. This note in this meeting automatically um, is joined into our group conversation. So one way the, the people in the team can get to this meeting is to come into their team's area, go to the team, choose general, and then click on the, the meeting link there. Those that are within the team will also get a Outlook invite to their calendar that will ask them um, that will tentatively put it on their calendar. So for example here is a team members calendar and notice that it came and put it tentatively on their calendar because I invited them the the meeting itself was created within the team so everyone in the team automatically got invited. So again these are two different ways to do pretty much the same thing. One is from the Outlook calendar that you might already be used to and then one is from the Teams interface and again this works well if you already have a team or planning on creating a team um, to share other files and things like that you can create a meeting right within the team itself.